Good morning. <laughs> it works, yes. They told me just take the stage, so I've done it. Um, I'd like to talk with you a little bit, nothing terribly formal, but um, I wanted to present some things that are going on visually in storytelling and are particularly happening in social media. Um, so many of you are here developing tools and, and building things to do things. These are things that are being done with tools, but by actually looking at what's out there, I think many of you will see we need new tools. So perhaps this will inspire some ideas of things we can do to increase storytelling, because I think people are already starting to do things that need to be displayed in new ways. So anyway, I'm here from Arizona, from the Cronkite School, which is um, very interested in innovative things. So if any of you are interested in talking to me about it, I'd love to talk to you about it. So let's start. So I'm going to show you a bunch of different things rather than be very formal and tell you things. I'm going to start off by looking at some of the material that a photographer based, a photojournalist based in New York has done. How many of you know Ben Lowy or know of his work? Okay, we got one strong hand out there. Good, it'll be new to you. I always love it when it's new to people. Well, he's most known for uh, some of the work that he did in Iraq, and particularly because he did it not only with his heavy-duty professional cameras, but he took his, his iPhone along and uh, started doing that, and he used Hipstamatic. He was the first photographer that the New York Times ever used on the front page, uh, printing one of his hipstamatic uh, uh, pictures. And um, he's, he's done some very interesting things, so we're going to look through and see what some of the things are that he's done. Um, this is an interview he did, and these are two of the pictures he did in Iraq with his iPhone using the hipstamatic. He likens it to using the different films, and he says, no, I don't like to do the post-production stuff, um, which so many people are doing right now. I like to choose the film. I learn, need to understand my equipment well enough to go out and produce something from the beginning. And he felt that it gave it much more immediacy to do that sort of thing. And because he's a good photojournalist, there was a lot of storytelling possibility in the images themselves. Um, he started saying that I want to draw people in because of the aesthetic, because of the art of what's going on, um, and have them stay and question things things and begin to wonder what the story is, and of course, that sets things off in their own brain. Let's kind of do away with the idea of a story as beginning, middle, end, and just open it up to all sorts of new ways to think about stories. Um, stories can take place over time. They can be curated and collected and put together, and they can also be the things that happen inside your own head and inside your own heart when uh, you respond to something that's particularly stimulating or interesting. So this is an example of something he's done on Instagram. Um, I don't even think he was using hipstamatic for this. Uh, it's uh, a picture of a horse getting a shower. Uh, but it's enigmatic, and it's beautiful, and it draws people in. Um, this is another picture he did, much closer to normal photojournalism, um, and it's, um, I'm going to, I think I'm going to mangle the name, Manny Pacquiao. Uh, it was the, the fight of the century that was coming up, happened uh, recently, and that was fine. That, you'd see that anywhere uh, in, a, in a good publication. He also put it on Instagram, but the thing was, he used it to spur interest on a story that was going to take place on his Instagram feed over a brief amount of time. Um, and so he set it up. He used words to interest people, bring them in, set up a hashtag. Um, this was one of the first ones that he put up in that story. But a very interesting thing happens when you start thinking of it as social media and not regular media. Because if you call up his Instagram feed, particularly on Instagram, where you search for something, you now see a strip. 
And this starts to tell a story in a very different way. It's almost like a comic. There's a lot that could be done with this form. Uh, it tells it in a reverse way, almost like the journalist's inverted pyramid uh, of one time. Um, and you can go on, and of course the captions explain it. And it's a very beautiful work. But this is a place where we need tools. We need to be able to extract these things, to have a place for stories that get told like this. Uh, this is another one he did of the Super Bowl. And if you go call up his Instagram feed and you just scroll on through, you'll see packages where all of a sudden it looks like it tells a story. And if you stop and take a look at it, indeed, it will tell a story. This is a uh, part of a five-part series on Subway Blues that he did. And this was somewhat of a game, which is another way of being a story of sharing things. People assign topics or techniques to people and it goes around. He was assigned to do five black and white images on a certain topic of his choice and then challenge other photographers to do the same thing. These were two that he did on Subway Blues. Uh, there's one of the big ones and you can see he's got a very uh, strong storytelling motive going on behind that as well because the picture itself just compels you to imagine stories. Now here's where it gets a little weird and kind of cool. Anyone know what this is? Okay. This is a series of blends. He calls these walkscapes. And what he does is he walks from one end of a block to the other end of the block with his phone going and he keeps just snapping pictures as he goes along. And then when he gets back, uh, it's post-process, he blends all of those pictures together and produces something like this. So it's all of the same scene, but it's, it's reality compressed into one, which is what he's playing with and, and purposely plays with. He has a particular feed called Conceptual Ben where he puts all of these and he explains a lot of them. That's another one. So moving on from there to something that's more journalistic in tone, uh, Pachi Tama uh, from Ecuador uh, lived in Austin, Texas. I think that's where he's living right now, but he wanders a lot. Um, became known in the social media world on Instagram because he developed a beat, essentially. He went out and he interviewed homeless people. In fact, he went out and he spent uh, you know, several weeks with them, getting to know them. And the idea was that the, the voices were simply not heard. And he would interview them and he would put their name in, happens with journalism, with people parachuting in, uh, getting a story for their use, basically, and then going out again. Um, he would actually keep coming back and he, he ended up doing some advocacy journalism with them too. One other element of his feed, and I'll show you some of it in a moment, is he uses his daughter as almost a character in it. Not only does he chronicle the story of her life, but he uses her to interact with the homeless. And so you can identify with her, you can identify with the homeless, you can identify with the topic. There are many ways to come into this story and you can go backwards and forwards. So again, Again, no beginning, middle, end, but each person has something like that in them. Uh, that's his daughter there. This was one of the early ones that he did. Uh, he, in return for speaking to the homeless, he would give them a dollar. He would apologize and say, I know this is a token, this is not much, but it's recognition of the fact that you're giving me time and I want to respect it. Um, and eventually he started asking them, well, what's your dream? If, if you had money, what would you do? And that launched an advocacy program called Dollar Dreams. Uh, one uh, living in Texas said his dream was to go to Oktoberfest. And so all the Instagram followers sent in enough dollars to take him to Oktoberfest and drink as much beer as he wanted. Only the thing was he didn't drink beer. He just wanted to go. So he ate all the other foods. Um, this was one he did in uh, Colombia, 
and uh, it's typical. He has gone to various uh, cities around the world, and he'll spend a week or two or three there doing photo visualizations. Um, and once you see them all together, they become a story of the homeless in that particular region. He goes for things that are not stereotypical, and he definitely goes for things that are personal and speak to the heart. He'll also look at things that are not people and very symbolic. Um, and so here you have things that he just found on the street, garbage turned into a heart. Um, and that's one of the ones I was telling you about where his daughter is interacting with some homeless people. They uh, give out candy at Easter time and uh, do various other things. They collect socks. They, they, I think she's, I don't know whether she's handing out candy or socks at this point, but um, it's become an interesting ritual. I think they've done this for three years now. Another feed. Uh, this is another way in which you can find stories on here. This is a collective of all sorts of artists who uh, join together to try and bust some of the stereotypes um, of African imagery. And they contribute to this feed that they've all, a uh, hashtag has developed and many other people have contributed to it as well. Uh, oops, sorry. This is an example of the, the pictures that they put up. They're always of very high quality, uh, but they, and they are always accompanied by a caption of some sort that tells the story of the picture and of the people. This one's a particularly interesting one in showing how they aim to go for the storytelling aspect of it all. Um, I don't know whether you can read what's up there, probably not, but the photographer, not the one pictured, but the one taking the overall picture, uh, trained the one taking the picture in how to use the camera, and they're now playing with the camera and trying it out. Uh, so they've uh, showing, uh, purposely showing some of the very everyday uh, small things that happen in life. Sorry, got to glug something there. Okay, so here's the caption, so you can read it a little bit better there. And you'll notice that they give some context to it too, so you get to learn a little bit about the country or the place or their conditions. Um, so it's it's sort of like a spoonful of sugar uh, and helping people to learn things by having that human connection first, where Ben Lowy was going for the art of it first. These people are going for that human connection to the picture first. And then we have things that emerge during the coverage of, uh, of events. This was uh, a particularly nasty and long-term series of riots in the United States recently um, over um, a, a black man who was uh, shot and killed by uh, a white policeman. And uh, these the riots erupted in the city near St. Louis. And this was one of the first pictures to emerge. And one of the reasons I wanted to show it was because one of the ways in which we're telling stories is to connect things with different artists, different places, different times, with iconic images. And so this particular image, which went viral um, and was picked up by many legacy organizations, actually has a lot of resonance to many other sorts of pictures, including this mural uh, by Banksy in Palestine. And uh, you'll see how the theme of something like this gets repeated in our remix kind of culture. Um, and so the stories that go with particular images gain more power and get incorporated into other stories. And I think this is an interesting thing to, uh, to look at. Um, so we have that. that. These are all Instagram pictures, by the way. Um, and uh, it's not exactly the same, but you notice people are, are making the association on these. You see the image incorporated down there with the iconic figures of Michael Brown, the uh, man who was killed in Ferguson, and Martin Luther King. 
And then you see that same graphic image that was excerpted from the original picture I showed you putting in, getting put into sort of posters. And we're seeing a whole new form of art develop on, uh, on social media that has to do with poster art. And it was sort of a, a form that was dying for a decade or two. And it's seeing resurgence now. Um, this is an example of some of the original art that came out of the Ferguson riots. And I've collected easily uh, 100, perhaps even 200 pieces of original art that were distributed on Instagram um, and then Facebook and Twitter. Uh, they're, they're all somewhat connected. Um, but they were created for this event. And they were expected to be not only ephemeral, but to be shared. And they were. And many of them went viral. There's another one. You can see it's quite beautiful. And it's very much relying on that storytelling technique of uh, in visual storytelling, of using the eyes and drawing you in and making you wonder what's written there and what's behind the back of the story. Um, the incorporation of words is very important because, of course, a visual story, words can be visual just as much as anything else can. And that's what's being played on here. Uh, there were a whole series of these where people would just do scroll some uh, tiny, tiny little mini story on a poster. It, there, there is something happening there, so it can qualify as a story. Uh, and they draw you in. Now, this is a hashtag that was devoted to another series. This is where a story becomes a story because of the cumulative effect. Um, and I'll show you some of the individual ones. But all of these were playing on the idea of using the last words somebody spoke before they were shot and killed. And so you get things like that. Uh, journalistically, we have um, a fact, we have uh, something to draw you in, and you have the name, you have the attribution, you have the date. So there's a lot being going on in these. And once you start seeing them all together, uh, they are extremely powerful. And they tell the story of a concept. Uh, this does as well. Uh, this was a protest in Portland, uh, Washington, but it was in reaction to the Ferguson riots. And as I mentioned before, we were using symbols. Uh, Pachi Tamir Kachafaz was using symbols in there. There are a lot of symbols here, um, and this kind this went viral as well. And there were many, many other pictures uh, of people hugging people you didn't expect to hug. This is a 12-year-old uh, boy. Uh, and the police officer. The boy was holding a sign that said, free hugs. Um, and uh, the policeman said, OK, I'd like a hug. And this was the result of it. And I'm going to end on a light note, a uh, very light note here, just to remind you that we don't have to wait for uh, crises and, and horrible things that we want to eradicate. We can just walk out of our apartment door and turn left to dump the garbage and find a, a gorilla sitting in our trash can and put it out. And I was quite surprised at how many people were, were interested in this. This was out my back door. So I'm going to leave it there. I'm curious to hear what some of you have to say and some of the uh, picture slash storytelling ideas that you might have. Um, and so you're most welcome to uh, to say anything, should you wish. <laughs> Thank you. I don't think there's one question out there. OK, I'm done. Take the stage. <laughs> Thank you.
A, to jest pokoń. Tak, to jest pewnie, bo to jest nie tu, gdzie spali ją. Tak, no można odkryć. I ja думаю, można nasiać w czas, wiecie na czas, w czas. Tam już to, ja думаю, że ludzie przyjdą na to.